all our honor due to you. Father, as a congregation, we come before you and seek thy word. Father, speak to us through the word that is preached. We pray that you will strengthen us and may we run and complete as people who will press to get the prize. As a congregation, we commit each and every one to your hand. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Amen. Today's reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, which talks about a race, a Christian life. Paul oftenly portrayed as a race. And here also we see he alludes to that metaphor. Verse 24 says, do not know, uh, uh, sorry, 24 says, do you not know that in a race the runners all complete, compete but only one receives the prize. So here, Paul talks about a race, a Christian life as a race. When you look at the book of Corinthians, we see the Corinthian church have a lot of, lot of issues, a lot of problems, a lot of challenges. And it seems that they have been complacent and they have been not living up to the standards. So it seems they have been now become flabby, a little bit fat. And now Paul is instructing them, you know, remember, you are running a race. You can't be complacent. You can't just, you know, live like just living. You have to have a, a proper uh, a focus because in a race everyone competes everyone comes and competes but only one will get the prize it is very interesting this metaphor if you look at here it says run in a such a way that you may win it so Paul instructs us not just to run, not just to, you know, compete, but to run as a way in which that you will receive the prize. Run a, run a race that you will obtain the honor and the glory of that competition. When you look at uh, this uh, passage, Paul is alluding to a very famous race happen every two years. That is the race of uh, Itmas. Um, you can say Itmas race or a uh, tournament. This is the second largest or le second famous famous uh, race in that whole region. You know the uh, uh, most famous one is the Olympic. The Olympic events are happening in Athens. So the Corinthians are so rich and they have, they have been so wealthy and they want to emulate an uh, Olympic tournament in their own region. So Corinth, Corinth is actually joined by a small land called Itmas. Uh, so this race is named as Itmas uh, race. And we see here, uh, they will run 
the, the, the race course is plotted in a hill country, uh, little far from the Corinth town, we call Echo um, Corinth, where is the surrounding of the Corinth, and they will run a race. And every two years we have this race, and people will get a crown, uh, which is done by pine wood or pine branches. I don't know which is the correct. Some say it is pine wood, some say it's pine needles. But there is a, some sort of a crown. They will compete for the crown. And it's a very prestigious thing. So Paul is now alluding to this. So every day, a Corinth citizen would see people getting prepared. They are exercising. They are running uh, to and fro. And some of the athletes, they are careful what they eat. They control what they put into the mouth. And they discipline themselves. So this is the illusion. This is the metaphor Paul draws his passage from. So what he says is, you know everybody who desire would come and compete. But desire itself is not enough. If you want to win, it's not enough. I mean, we have desires. We have good desires. Some people will have, will have you know, now, as an example for me, I just want to put down this belly and, you know, try to uh, manage or control my diet. But still it is there. The flabby belly is there. Right? So we have the desire. We want to have eight packs, but it won't happen if we don't um, do what is necessary for that. So Paul is alluding to that. You know everybody will compete. They will come and join there. But only one will receive the prize. So he says, run in a such a way that you may win it. So as, a Christ, as Christians, we have to remember this. You know, Christian, Christian life is a race. We can't be complacent. We can't be lazy. We can't be, you know, distracted with things. We have to run. We have to be fit to run. Because we are running for the glory of the Lord. And if you look at this, the further it says, athletes exercise self-control in all things that they do it to receive the perishable wreath. So here we see these athletes do a lot of things. They control everything. Every two years they have this competition and they do whatever possible. And here it's a very beautiful word Paul highlights, that is the self-control. You know, in the fruit of spirit, Galatians 5, 23, one composite of the fruit is self-control. So dear church, we have to exercise self-control. Self-control in what we consume. Consume physically, materially and spiritually. We have to be careful what we hear. Sometimes the news, sometimes the things we hear will distract us from the price, from the finishing post. You see, we have to guard our relationships. Sometimes our careless living and careless words will destroy very precious relationships. So you have been stewarded some relationships. There are relationships. When you are busy, when you are doing good work, actually you are doing work for the Lord. But that busyness, that anxiety, distract you from the most important thing. Do you remember Luke 10, 
Martha and Maria, both are doing good. They were doing what is necessary. They were doing what is needed. Just imagine, the Lord is coming to their house. And you know, they don't have any WhatsApp or telephones or anything like that. And then just imagine how many people would come. Surely, 12 disciples will follow him. And there will be another more disciples would come in. So the house is filled with now people. Now someone has to serve them. Someone has to prepare meals. So Martha is doing that. Martha is working hard and trying to prepare meals. Just imagine if I tell my wife, you know, one of our senior pastors is coming and probably the, all the assistant pastors are also coming with him. What will, what will happen to my wife? <laughs> She'll be running up and down. Probably she will scold me also. You know, you should tell me early, right? But life is such, you know, sometimes unexpected things happen. So anyway, Lord is on his way to, the, on, way to Jerusalem. He stopped at Bethany, at this home. And Martha is working so hard. And the busyness, the anxiety, you know, things that has not done would have really, you know, made her very anxious. And uh, things which are, he, she has to do would have been really troubled her. So she is now troubled and anxious. And finally she sees her sister is also now not helping her. And then she comes to the Lord and complains. That happens. So just imagine what, what is the situation. Her relationship with, his, with her sister would have fallen, no? Have a rift. And not only that, he comes to the Lord and teach the Lord what he ought to say and do. He said, Lord, look at this. Ask her to do things. Do this. Just imagine. You start to instruct God also. Lord, you know, you know these people are not doing that. Ask them, you know, tell them to do it. Sometimes they will come to the leaders or the elders and say, you know, you have to do this. We will become so anxious, so troubled with the work. And we will sometimes suffer our relationship. That, that, that the way we act, the way we speak will damage our relationships. And sometimes we will hurt the people who love us most. So be careful. But Mary has chosen the precious portion which will not be taken away from her. So we have to really discern. Yes, we have to do things. We are busy. But then we have to remember self-control. You know, don't go overboard. And Paul says that, you know, be careful. Be careful what you do, how you conduct life. Have self-control. You have to have perseverance and you have to have self-control. We should not allow our life to just drift away. You know, if you allow the life to drift away, what will happen? He says this. He says, they do it to receive the perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. We run not for a perishable thing. We are not running for some uh, temporary thing, not for our own glory or not for some other thing. We are not running because we want to do something or some, we want to gain something or we, we want to gain some, we want to do something. But we are running for the eternal glory. What we do in here will manifest eternally. Now you see we are doing this and this is, you can see, ah, we are just uh, refurbishing and doing whatever. 
but you but you're tired but your what your 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 efforts your tiredness your work will be richly rewarded remember that because you are not doing for yourself it is not you are doing sake of this church but do you are doing this for the kingdom of god and doing it for the people so remember whatever you do god will remember that we are not running for perishable things we are running for imperishable crown so remember that don't get anxious don't get upset sometimes we feel very upset i mean sometimes i also feel like that uh, sometimes i get disappointed because people don't do things and sometimes church uh, when you pastor a church people don't come and sometimes the very parishioners will hurt you say th- some things behind you and sometimes we get very upset angry tired but remember we are not running after a imper- uh, perishable thing we are running for a imperishable crown one day i know the savior will crown us with that imperishable crown so be careful with your relationships be careful way in way you live don't allow that complacency complacency and don't allow that um busyness the tiredness the anxiety the disappointment you know go over and hurt others remember you have to run you have to have perseverance and also you have to have self control look at what paul says here so i do not run aimlessly no do i box though i beating the air here you have to understand and you have to find something worthwhile to live you see you have a one life to live i mean you can spend your life just working earning and uh, enjoy you can do that if you want to have a good house you can build that a good car good life but are you living for something which is worthwhile after all when you finish your life and reflect back and can you say yes i have done something marvelous i have achieved something wonderful god has used me in a magnificent way i am so happy that i chose this path you see we can live a life time will go so fast you can't stop time but you can you know cause that time invest it in a worthwhile course you see you see we have to find a good vision we have to find something we should live and when we look back we have to be happy you see this year i celebrate 20 years after my graduation i graduated from colombo theological seminary in 2003 and the very first when we when we um when we when i was just be, before i uh, got the degree i thought to myself what shall i do with my life where should i invest my life and i chose colombo theological seminary to invest you know why i want to make a change i saw the church is going in a downhill pastors and ministers live a life which is i think disgracing to the lord they are so selfish and they are like 
like parasites sometimes they will they will suck the life blood of the congregation and they kill the congregation you know people are so tired sheep are disarray so i thought i will do something i will produce a new generation i will teach and i will invest in these people's life i will give my philosophy i will give my way of thinking you know put in the cross in front of you you are not living for riches and whatever you can gain from this world but you live for the cross and live for the lord and live for the kingdom i want to inculcate that values to the students now after 20 years i look back so actually i started teaching in uh, soon as i graduated i start teaching the next term i start teaching and 2004 i joined cts and i invest my whole 20 years of my life to building up a new generation of leaders who will have some conscience now if you ask me do you have any disappointment yes i do have some have uh, performed very badly which i have never expected but still i have hope now yesterday we had a, a graduate retreat we are going to graduate 174 graduates this july 15th and i spoke to them and i told them you know i will bl- i bless you and i quote uh the song from uh, um uh, deborah and barak um, that is in uh, judges 5 31 i said i i quote that was said i want you to be i bless you to be like the sun in his full brightness he says people who love the lord will shine or shine bright like the noon day so i told them i want you to be people who will shine shine in righteousness shine in godliness shine in god's character and i hope that they will take that to their heart and they will shine so dear friends find something to invest your life after all when you look back you will see you have made a difference and that is a worthwhile thing that is what paul says he is not running aimlessly he is not boxing um what he says he is not boxing uh though beating the air right he has a aim have a aim let us build this church let us have some kind of a aim yes we will build this church let us we you know rege- regenerate this church let us pray earnestly and let us ask people to come let us fill this empty seats let us do that and after all when we come to that last moment when we draw that last breath when we look back and church of the servant lord we see a powerful congregation praising and worshiping i think that is some sort of achievement so dear friends let us take something which is worthwhile to live i just want you to have something like paul not running aimlessly not being complacently but have something that you can live and finally be proud of and when the lord appear we all will receive the glow, the crown of righteousness and that day we will receive our prize so let us have a good aim let us have a good aim don't be disappointed don't be 
discouraged you know most of all i think i should be more discouraged because i every time i come and preach here and i can see a empty chairs no i'm not disappointed i'm always in my mind i imagine all these pews are filled i earnestly pray that god will bless this church and here it says 27 but i punish my body and enslave it so that after proclaiming to others i myself should not be disqualified so dear friends we have to punish our life punish our body we have to pray more we have to pray fasting and prayers we have to earnestly live a life you see we have we we need to we 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 should not allow our life to just drift away that is what paul is saying i want to make myself disciplined discipline hard you know why that i may be not disqualified that i mean when you look at this some some theologians say paul is talking about salvation uh, ck barrett say um uh, looking at the early part he says uh, paul's baptism and paul's suffering for the cross paul's calling for the apostleship uh and all what paul has done will not uh give him the ability or give him the salvation right i think that is wrong that is not what he is talking about what he talks about a very beautifully uh, morris says he says he is fearful that he will not get the final uh acclamation from the lord saying good and faithful law, uh, servant you have done what i have asked you sometimes in our business in our in our own distractions we will lose our aim and then we will um perform below our ability you know most of most of the educators they say the students who have the ability will always uh, most of the time perform underperform you know why because they don't have self discipline so dear friends let us have self discipline let us punish our body and let us focus on something which is worthwhile we have a little more to live and some will have lot to live uh, uh, but uh, some of us will have another 20 years to live so in that 20 years let us seek something which is worthwhile to live please remember david and samson both have so much ability so much affluence but their desires disqualified them so let us not run aimlessly but live a christian life so that we will receive the prize run it such a way that you may win the prize let us pray gracious heavenly father thank you for this wonderful words wonderful encouragement from your word gracious lord we commit now this congregation to your hand and we ask that you may bless each and every one their effort their work what they do to build up this church father we know 
that there will be a price for them, for their work. Now we commit each and every one. If we are complacent, if we have fallen away, if we are just distracted, lazy, as Paul says, give us your Holy Spirit so that we have perseverance and self-control and discipline our body so that we see wonderful, glorious things, magnificent things happen through us, happen through this church. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.